Welcome to the Success Journey Show. Let's travel together through the lives of individuals on the road to success. Hey, what's going on, travelers? It's Ricky Ventures and Marlon Madden, and we are back with you for another episode of the Success. That's that's right, the Success Journey Show. Marlon, what's good, bro? How you doing today? Nothing much, man. Just uh, enjoying, you know, these early mornings. Um, yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. Also enjoying the early morning. I mean, at, at this point, we are at the the transition point for the kids getting back in school. And though, you know, yep. they're not starting yet, they still have a couple of weeks left. But uh, I, I got to get them up and ready to go. So it's like, all right, guys, let's wake up early. Let's get to bed at a good time. Um, you know, start being productive with our days again, because I mean, summer is great. I love summer for them, but you know, getting them back into a routine, man, can be a struggle. So yeah, try yeah, to yeah, minimize yeah. that. I got one high schooler and two middle schoolers this year, man. So it's, yeah, it's, yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is going to be a good year for us, man. Yeah. Good yeah, year yeah. for us, man. So what's, what's been going on on your end, man? No, I was just thinking about some stuff. Um, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm not just going to pigeonhole and say church folks. I'm going to say everyone that wants to make an impact. Um, you have to get out to your communities. Just for church folk, the reason why I said church folks is we still believe in your church and we still believe in the, 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 the concept of church, but you have to get out to your communities, meaning you can't just be around the same people every week, only talk to them, only interact with them and then say that you want to make an impact in the community. A lot of, as we know, a lot of people that go to different churches, they don't even live in the immediate community because some people drive in, the pastor drive in, all the different things that happen. And the church is only an assembly area for them to assemble, congregate, close, go home and rinse and repeat. In order to make an impact, you really have to think about community, think about providing service to the community, think about being a value or add value to the community, and not for any kind of gain, not to bring somebody into the fold, as we say, not to make them understand why church is necessary, none of that, just to be an impact in their lives so they can see some kind of growth within the community or that, that that you have placed value in their life. So I want I want to challenge a lot of people that want to say that they want to change community. I don't care if it's what kind of change that you're trying to do. There's some people that say, I want to be a financial, I want to teach finance better. I want our, our community to have better understand fiscal responsibility. But all they're doing is coming there to sell programs. Yeah. 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 No, you're right, dude. Like, it's, I mean, you kind of get locked into the routine of it. And, you know, it's the, the culture of, you know, going in and one day a week or everything you do is pro, program, programmatic. Yeah. Right. So it's built around a program or how are we going to do this? All right. Everyone has to get together here. We got to get it there at this time. We got to set up here. We got to have this person in charge and, you know, different things. It's like, it's just a, a program that you got to come and participate in. Right. Yeah. Um, and void of programs, you're, you're kind of, you're waiting for someone else to initiate hmm. the action activity. Not to say, you know, what the action activity is wrong is great, you know, however way we can, you know, reach and touch people. But if we're able to um, apply that to our everyday life, you know, like, you know, my program and my activity of me living is connecting with the people that are around me. Yes, sir. Right. Um, but in order It. Uh, travelers it's like you, 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 a lot of times we try to go for the go for the huge win 
like what, what is what and what is that huge win yes right what is you the know huge like <laughs> oh i got it if i if i really if i'm really witnessing i'm i'm, I'm bringing in a church like uh, it's not really that's not really yeah. what what it's all about right um but what it is about is am i leaving a little bit of love with a person so that they can know what the love of god is you yeah. know in their life um and let that see that the holy spirit now it's planted in them that God has planted in them. You're nurturing, you're nourishing that seed by speaking words of love to them. Yeah. Like, I mean, every, the Holy Spirit is it's, it's, it's part of everyone. God's I'm gonna give you my spirit. I'm gonna give you so they're, they're the part of God's spirit in everybody, but it's for us to give to wa- help water that seed by being a representation representation of what God is. So whew, so we are creating environments and atmospheres for that person to, to grow. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they like, Hey, God, we know God's spirit is going to grow in this type of atmosphere. We know this seed is going to grow. A mango seed is going to grow better in the, in the islands versus in, 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 in the Northeast. Right. Um, and it's okay. What atmosphere do I need to be or create or bring with me in order to get in maximum. order for that, Yes. Bro. Yeah. So as long as we're focusing on building those atmosphere around people that even that we don't know, people that come in connection every single day, that is you helping water that spirit that's in that person to grow yeah. and flourish. Yeah. And, and that's and that's our job. That's that. That's our that's job. A, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So. Yeah, man. I'm just looking at it. It's a different since. Since the pandemic, my well, you know, we always had a different way of thinking, but since the pandemic, I really see where just being in out in the community and talking to people, you don't I don't have to even tell them one thing about the love of God. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to say, God loves you, brother. Yeah. And so do I. Yeah, I don't have to do that. <laughs> I just I just yeah. have to create that atmosphere like you said that's conducive to whatever that person needs in order to grow yep that's it that's it well hey man uh travelers were in for a treat today talking about help helping others um serving others uh, our guest today uh comes from the field of nursing and she has transformed what her learning and her serving patience to also serving people and helping them serve more people. So the multiply effect, right. Uh, and, and, and serving people. So we are looking forward to, to hearing from her, uh, this morning. And we want to thank you guys for joining us again. Hey, so right after this commercial here, man, we will jump right into our favorite segment of the show. All right, everyone. Peace. Well, uh... Hey, travelers, we are back. We are back with our favorite segment of the show. And as we promised, we have a special guest with us, none other than Tina Baxter. Tina, thank you for joining us this morning on the Success Journey show. Um, Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. It's our our privilege and honor. Um, Why don't you start off by sharing uh, just a little bit about yourself? Well, I am a nurse practitioner. Uh, My specialty is geriatrics. My subspecialty is general psychiatry. I have been a nurse for over 20 years. Mm. I have been a nurse practitioner for about 16 years. Yeah, about 20, yeah, 16 years now. And uh, I've always enjoyed working with older adults. I've always enjoyed working with the mental health population. And I've done it. Um, as a staff nurse from adolescent to adult, as uh, a CNA, I worked in a nursing home. I've uh, worked for hospice. I've had so many different opportunities to try different specialties and fields in my nursing career, and it's been great. Mm, I love it. I love it. We have a lot to talk about today. Um, nursing in itself 
you know, we've seen that um, really ex expand and explode just in terms of focal point as over the last few years, right? Um, with yes. everything that this whole world has gone through and everything that has been shaken up um, and just the stress and the pressure that has been placed on just the medical system uh, of, of this nation. And so I know we're definitely going to hear about that aspect of it uh, from your perspective. But if, if we journey back, um, well, it, it takes, I, I, we, Marlon and I, we have many uh, nurses that are part of our family, uh, families. And we, we, we noticed the nurturing um, characteristics that they have. Um, what question, the first question I wanna ask for you is like, when did you realize that this is the path that you wanted to take uh, going to the nursing, serving people in that way? I was in, up until then, I had it in my mind that I wanted to be a physician. I have physicians and nurses in my family and I thought I'll, I'll be a physician. And so I had that in my mind. I was in pre-med, took the MCAT twice, you know, that's how far I got. And I realized I did not want to do that. I had actual nightmares about men um, in white coats strapping me down to a desk mm. and learning all this stuff. And it just took the joy out of it for me. Mm. So I got a job as a CNA in a nursing home. This, by the way, is in my fifth year as a senior at a very expensive private co college that my parents were paying for. Mm. Uh, and, so, mm -mm -mm. and so I got a job as a CNA and I saw what the nurses did and I thought I could do that. And in my first day of nursing class, I remember sitting there and listening to the lecture and I thought, I have found my tribe. This is where I'm supposed to be. Mm. This this is where my calling is. And oddly enough, my freshman year of college at that very expensive private Christian university, a missionary came up to me and said, you're going to be a great nurse one day. Mm. And I said, I'm going to be a physician. I am not going to be a nurse. He said, oh, I'm sorry, but God told me to tell you that. <laughs> I learned <laughs> that when prophecy comes, listen. Because yes. I realized that I didn't want to be in medicine. And this is the turning point for me. I spent two weeks with my cousin. Love my cousin. He's a wonderful OBGYN. But this is what I saw. He had no life. <laughs> he was mm. always working, always on call. People woke him up at 3 o'clock in the morning, these women, and were actually in labor. And I, and, and I went with him during this time. So I'm like, yeah, if, if you're in the hospital and you're waking me up at 3 a.m., you better be having a baby. There's no Braxton Hicks with me. I knew mm. I didn't have the patience for OB. <laughs> That's why I am not an OB nurse. And so I saw that. He had all the toys but never had time to play with them. And I thought, I don't want that lifestyle. And so when I got into nursing school, which is a whole other story, <laughs> mm -hmm. when I got into nursing school, I realized that I wanted to talk to my patients and not just, you know, work on fix the problem. I wanted to know, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. And that's why nursing really appealed to me. Uh, isn't isn't it funny you. that in life, a lot of people... You know, here on the show, we try to stress about, you know, be yourself because everybody else is taken, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And you you see someone from afar. It could be a pilot. It could be a, it could be a doctor. It could be whatever position. It could be a whatever position you could think of. And so a lot of people don't think of what it takes in order to get to that goal and what that person had to sacrifice you know what was your what was your parents saying to you when you're sit when you're sitting there and they're they're shelling that money out at that private uh christian institution and they're saying man when my daughter finishes and she becomes a physician oh man we're gonna love it and enjoy it and have a great graduation what was your thoughts and what was how did your parents approach that well, this is how my dad approached it. He said, mm, you mm. can do whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you right now, this second degree, that's on you. I paid for the first one. <laughs> 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 and and the, the funny thing is, when I became a nurse practitioner, 
my parents would call, you know, they would go to their doctors. They would call me on the phone, hand the phone to the doctor and say, this is my doctor. Talk, talk to her. And I pick up the phone and I'm like, hello. And they're like, this is Dr. So-and-so. And I'm calling and I'm here with Mr. Washington. And I'm like, okay. And this is what I want you to do. This is what your dad has. And I said, okay. Put him back on the phone. I said, dad, do what the doctor tells you to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how that went it, you know and, and, and like I, you know, my parents are very supportive in everything that I do um, I just lost my dad in November and oh, so, man, so, so, to hear so that. thank you and, and his his support has always meant the world to me and my mom is they're, they're, they're level they're, they're different in how they support you right mm. you know Dad, dad was the one that would take me to the lab when I was in high school and I had a job working for the lab and he would take me to the lab and then sneak me off after work and we'd go get a snack uh, before we got home for dinner. Mom was the one that would take me and drop me off outside when I worked at the country club. That was a whole other story. Um, it dropped me off at the front door <laughs> instead of the back like you're supposed to because, you know, I'm just a worker. <laughs> <laughs> so they, their support is different. So dad, dad is more of a hide the scenes. Bob is like out front. <laughs> oh. oh man! No, no, I love it. I love it. And and so man, it's it's funny because I've also experienced times when people try to speak things into your life, right? And it's not until later on where like sometimes you even forget that the person said something or until you're actually in the moment and like, oh shoot, you know, they were right. She was right. They were right. Yes. Um, how, how do you, how do you kind of, how does that encourage you? Right. Because, you know, it, it shows like a, a higher sense of, of power, a higher sense of spiritual guidance that's on your life. Like, how does that make you feel as an individual? The reason why I'm asking this, I'm call to you, the reason why I'm asking this question is because I'm trying to show the correlation for individuals that, yeah, even though you're on this journey, you're not on this journey alone, right? And there, if you if we open our eyes, there's moments of guidance that's there, but sometimes we're just not ready to receive it. So I'll go back to you now. You know, interesting enough, um, I chose that university because I was on my own spiritual journey at the time, right? Mm -hmm. I grow, grew up in a Christian background, Christian family. My mom's an evangelist. My dad was a trustee and a deacon. And I wanted to find my own way. I wanted to have a mm -hmm. faith that was mine. Mm -hmm. So what I learned during that process was to be open to new possibilities mm. and not to just, you know, make up my mind of how things are supposed to go. I learned to enjoy the, the journey, right? Um, because so many times we think this is how my life is going to turn out and it doesn't and we get disappointed. But I've learned that in that moment of disappointment, there may be a lesson that I need to learn there may be a new place where I'm going and I don't get there if I don't have those disappointments. Mm -hmm. I don't have those forks in the road. I don't have those turns. And I had to learn that as a process. Um, really quick example and how I got into entrepreneurship. I was, in the, I was working for a company as a nurse practitioner and our ethical... Um, aspects didn't mesh very well mm. um they were doing some things that i questioned that sent me to the altar every sunday because i, I was thinking <laughs> to myself one day the fans right. are going to come yeah. on the door and if they start talking and asking me questions i told them up front i will squeal like a pig i am not going to jail for nobody but jesus <laughs> and so I wouldn't do the things they were asking me to do because I considered to be unethical and in some cases might have been illegal. Mm. Um, so I refused to do it. So we did, we mutually parted ways. Mm. And so I took my severance package. And at this point, I was really feeling low and defeated, right? This is my first 
as my uh, friend called it, real job as a nurse practitioner. Mm. And I just felt so beat up after that experience. I learned a lot in that experience, but I was just so beat up. So I took that severance and I was sitting there trying to think of what I'm going to do next. And my friend said, hey, I'm going to start this business. Why don't you join me? And we started a CNA training school. And so I look back now and I say, you know, there was a reason for this experience because God used that experience, that moment that seemed like my greatest defeat and turned it into my greatest mm. triumph because it exposed me to entrepreneurship that I wouldn't have been willing to do had I yes, still been yes. working for them. Mm. And so that gave me that entrepreneurship bug, right? I love that. I mm. love doing, doing business. It just... I never would have thought I would have gone this route in my life. That's I was I was planning to be hospital president. You know, I was looking at all those different things. I was in management. I thought about, OK, I'm going to go into research and I'm going to do all these different things. I'm going to go to university and teach. And I've done some of those things. Right. I've done those things. But when I got to entrepreneurship, I realized I can take all of those experiences, all those things that I've been through. And use that as fuel for my journey as an entrepreneur. Mm. And for me, learning that lesson that, yeah, maybe somebody will speak something into your life and maybe it'll be for ill and maybe it'd be for bad. You have to decide how you receive it. And so there might be something that you, you hear and it's not for you right now, but it's for you later. Or you may hear somebody, somebody and maybe they're just a hater and it's like, you know what? I'm not going to let you put that on me. But then there's times when they're speaking into your life prophetically and they are encouraging you and you don't know it, but you hold on to that nugget. And years later, it comes to fruition. I had a conversation with my mom and I said, I didn't realize why I did what I did in high school. So most people don't know I was a radio DJ in high school and college. Radio DJ. I was a radio DJ. I was Lady T, and I had a job. Uh, well, there you go, Lady, Lady T. T. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sir. and then I had a gospel show. There you All go. Right. And that's still my gaming name. If, if those of you who are, uh, you know gaming with, it's still my gaming <laughs> name. Um, and I I learned about radio and production and and all of those things you know because that was part of your classes when you took radio in high school, and I just had my college show. But years later, I'm sitting here and I'm doing my podcast and I've been on other people's podcasts and I'm doing a live t uh, uh, radio, uh, you know, a uh, YouTube show and all this stuff on nursing news. And it dawned on me. That experience of being a radio DJ helped me be more comfortable behind a mic. So when it came time to do a podcast years later, yes. here I am. Yes. God wastes nothing. Man, I am telling you, you know, Ricky and I mm. grew up in church and we were always at the forefront planning a program um, on the mic, singing, going out, doing all the things. And Ricky and I always said, whatever happened prepared us for here where we're having the podcast. Now, mm. you, 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 you surmised everything and it sounds great, right? But there is a learning curve when you're coming from that nine to five. Yes. And now you're the master of your faith. To the 24 hour. To the 24 <laughs> hour. <laughs> there you go. And you, you eat what you kill, right? Right. So, 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 so Lady T, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, talk about when your friend said, hey, let's do this entrepreneur thing. What's that learning curve? What information did you have to get how did you did was it what you expected when you said i'm going to get my llc and i'm going to own my own business right how was that learning curve and what did you have to do in order to make sure that it was successful one of the things that we did early on is because of the, the type of uh school that we were opening up we made sure we got all the information from the regulatory bodies right what did we need to do to actually open? And then we started working on our business plan. And this is what a lot of entrepreneurs skip is that business plan piece. 
They're like, you know, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll hear coaches that say, oh, you don't need a business plan. Well, like, I beg to differ. I've been a nurse for so long. I know you need a plan. Whether it's a nursing care plan, you need a plan for your business. And I'm not talking about that boring business plan that everybody tells you to write. No, I'm talking about a plan for your business on how you get from point A to point Z or zebra, Mm. wherever you are in the world. (laughs) So I said, I said, I'm going to really research what it means to do my job. So I was tasked to be the chief operating officer. That's Mm -hmm. operations. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I took that very seriously. That meant I had to know um, how do we onboard our teachers? How do we onboard our students? And what kind of policies do we need to have in place? Because I'm operations, right? Uh, Simple things from do we use a a paper timesheet? And we move to electronic timesheet. You know, if nobody else is going to show up, I have to show up because I'm operations. My job is to keep the thing going. And so that's that's what I had to learn. And it's not a I work from 10 to 4 every day and I get to go home and enjoy the rest of my day. No, it's sometimes I am the janitor and sometimes I'm the secretary and I'm the marketer. And I, you know, and sometimes I'm you know, the person out front. And sometimes I'm the person sweeping in the back and you never see me. But the point is I show up. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I show up. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, man. See a lot, a lot of people, they see the sexy side of business and it's like, Oh yeah, I have my own business now. And you know, um, yeah, I'm not working the nine to five anymore. I'm just going to do my own thing. Not realizing that, doing your own thing requires even more of you a lot yes. of times, oh, not a lot of times, all the time. Um, and if it's not something that you love, then you can easily be uh, discouraged throughout it. You know, I like when you said that, Hey, you show up, you show up because it, it's something I know you had to do every single day when, in the nine to five. And it's, it's, it's not something that you had to learn to do to show up. It was more so where you were applying that thing to show up. Now, how did you get past that unknown, you know, stage of like, yeah, I want to learn everything. I want to learn, but I really don't know what I'm doing. You know, like walk, walking in every day, I have to, I got to learn this thing. Like, I, how did you, how were you comfortable in your own shoes of just, being walking in that valley of unknown as you were trying to build this thing? I realized very quickly that I needed to find some mentors in my life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, uh, we looked at people that had done it before, mm-hmm. uh, people who were trailblazers. Um, I was fortunate because I had a lot of phenomenal nurses in my life and still do. Um, I'm, a member of the black nurses association here in Anderson. Mm -hmm. And um, they were very instrumental in my early education as nurses. And so they, they also were uh, partners with us in this journey. And you're talking about nurses that were nursing directors and uh, vice presidents of hospitals (laughs) that Mm -hmm. came alongside us. As we started our business, we met with, um, retire business owners uh, through SCORE. We went to um, networking events to talk to people. And so this is where I say you need to find people around you that will support you and mentor you along the process. Um, A lot of it was, yes, trial and error. Uh, I learned a lot of great things from that first business. We were in business for about 10, 12 years. We closed right before the pandemic and I transitioned. It was smooth. I'm telling you, I transitioned right into my current business uh, because my partners were um, a lot of here. Here's what happened. And this is a very good, good uh, lesson for your listeners. When you have partners in a business, you all have to be rowing in the same direction. Mm. And when life happens and you suddenly start uh moving in different directions. I had business partners. One wanted to just flat out retire. (laughs) She was done. I had another one that wanted to move in a different direction. 
and do something completely different than what we were doing. And then you had me who was this, I'm like, let's ramp it up. Let's go faster. And they're like, whoa, it's too fast. Slow down. And I'm like, no, no, we need to go faster. And so in that process, this is another, another way that the Holy Spirit leads you. God spoke to me and said, where I'm taking you, you can't take everyone. Mm. And I realized that that business was going to close down. So in the interim, I was asked to do some consulting on the side. So I needed a vehicle to do that. So I created my own business with my husband. We opened up a separate business. So I had two businesses. And I knew that we were going to close this other business. I just didn't know when. So I waited for the timing because I'm loyal. You know, I'm going to stay there until the wheels fall off because that's just how how I, I am. And it took right before the pandemic, this was God's timing. The person who was our CEO called and said, we're closing February, end of the month, we're done. We closed at the end of February. In March, I moved to my new building with my existing business. And then boom, the pandemic happened. And I was perfectly prepared to work online and work from home and c- consistently build my business. This is how God's time. It, the pandemic happened. And I'm still working clinically, by the way. I still work clinically. I still see patients. And God's timing happened so that I had to be at home in my own office working on not only my clinical practice, but my business and building it to such that I've added on other services. And by the way, I just reopened a CNA training school under my own brand. Mm. God can do a lot of different things behind the scenes that you don't know that he's preparing you for. And so when you're learning these things and you're going in and networking with people, understand that he sometimes put people in your life for a season and then he moves them out the way. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that. I purposely started networking and that led me to build relationships and to meet people from all walks of life. I met with some really great women. I was in a, a group called Advancing Indie Women. And I was in the inaugural class, this leadership class that they did. And those relationships that I built, I still have to this day. And those are some Mm. of my big supporters. I'll call on those women and say, hey, I'm getting ready to do this project. Do you want to be a part? They'll Mm. call on me and say, hey, I need a speaker for something. Can you come and help us out? So I think that's awesome. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, you know, a lot of times planning, right? Mm-hmm. Being at the right place at the right time, um, prepared to take on the task that's coming, and also just being. Yes. That networking portion that you talked about is so important that we've and I'm and I and, and I know you mentioned you're a gamer. I don't know what game mm-hmm. you play, Call of Duty. I don't know what you do, what, what mm-hmm. game it is. In the in the digital world. Especially today, you see a lot of people. They're they're recruits. They stay, they stay to themselves. They're in their thing. Oh, I'm not really social. I'm not this. I'm not this. I'm not this. But you have to go out in order to be able to get the right person to give you the right answers when it comes to the unknown. Because there's some things that textbooks is just not going to answer. The theory and 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 the practical don't align. Right. Mm -hmm. They said, if you do X, Y should happen. Right. But it doesn't work that way. Your husband that you talked about, talk about that support system that was behind you or beside you or wherever he was. Right. Right. That said, babe, uh, Lady T, listen, man. (laughs) (laughs) But he says, hey, Lady T, I know the business is about to close. Boom. And then you said fe- end of February, I know March 14, full blown pandemic. Yep. Talk about that support system and how did you guys collaborate in order to execute what you have now? Well, 
my husband um, at the time, we were looking at different vehicles. And so we were introduced to a company, a couple of companies, um, uh, network marketing companies. And so uh, we were thinking, oh, okay, this is something we might want to do. And so my business partners, had, they, now they attended the same presentations. I just want to make that clear. They were given mm-hmm. the opportunity they chose not to accept. We yeah. did. We said, okay, we're going to try it. We're going to do this. And so in the process of all the different things that I was doing, this made sense to me. It clicked in my head. I'm thinking this will help small business owners. This helps individuals. This helps families. This makes sense because what I do in my other business, I'm a legal nurse consultant. I work with attorneys. Mm. So part of this company was helping people get access to attorneys. To me, that's a no brainer. Mm. And so um, I, we, we were also users of the product. So it was like, Oh, this is perfect. You know? So my husband and I, we discussed it and I said, I need something separate from this business because it really doesn't have to do with what they're doing and they're not interested in doing what I'm doing. So let's, let's do this together. And it came out at a great time because my husband didn't know it at the time, but he was going to be facing several health challenges, which caused him to leave his career um, in electronics. He was an electronic technician. He'd worked for like um, manufacturing companies, automotive, medical manufacturing. The last uh, two companies he worked for, they manufactured medical devices and he would test the medical devices and make sure they worked and everything like that. And so that was his career. And then suddenly he couldn't do that anymore. Mm. And so it came at a perfect time because that allowed him to pivot from what he had been trained to do, went to school, did all this stuff. And now he can't do that physically anymore. And Mm. so I said, babe, let's, let's, let's develop this company together. And so he became my business partner, which has been great. And he likes to joke and say that I became a business partner because that way I can see her more often. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, 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 whatever it takes. But (laughs) it really did work because during that time, during COVID, guess what? We were together 24 7. Yes, Mm. ma'am. We went to our office, which he affectionately dubbed our summer home. Uh, we would be at our office for hours during the day, and then we would go home and sleep at night and come back. Mm, yeah. And it's just the two of us. You know, back then, it was like, you know, we went to the grocery store and maybe got some meat because you know, it was bare. And so yeah. we learned how to adapt during that season. And so we were together all the time. So we had all these ideas for sales and marketing, you know, all these trainings that we could attend. And so it gave us this opportunity to really pour into our business together. Yeah, yeah. And so now, uh, a, a true story, uh, my husband was in the hospital one time and I go up there and he's like, I need more business cards. I said, business cards. He said, yeah, yeah, I've been passing out business cards and been talking to all the doctors and the nurses that come in. <laughs> and your, I'm like, your husband sound like me. <laughs> you're prospecting <laughs> from the from the hospital bed. <laughs> and then he'll tell everybody, hey, you know, uh, my wife's a nurse and she's got this business and she helps nurses build their own uh, businesses. You need to call her. <laughs> so he's, oh, okay. <laughs> he's my front man, if you don't know. Yeah. Out. That's sir. That's sir. Uh-huh. Oh man. Oh man, that's beautiful. ABC always be closing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he knows everybody and does not meet a stranger. Yes. That is his personality. So he yes. that that is his. He'll walk in and like find out. Oh yeah, I know so and so who knows you. Who yeah, I, I'm just like, how do you remember all this stuff? I, wow. I'm really bad at names. I'm telling <laughs> you, bad at names. <laughs> it's a skill. It's yeah, a skill. It is. Yep. It is. Yep. Networking is a mm-hmm. skill. And there's some people, I, like I, there's some people they go out to a function and they meet people and they're like, oh hi, and they network. Mm-hmm. But then there's some people who meet someone and a year later they'll be like, hey, uh, didn't I see you at? Didn't uh, I see you somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you said you were gonna um, and the person's like, I did. Yeah, and then it turns to this whole thing, mm-hmm. and I, I I I really love that. So now you found somebody, or you have somebody that both of you are rowing in the right direction because yes. 
you're saying you can't work with those partners. One is rowing left, one rowing right. Exactly. One wants to go backwards, whatever the situation. One don't want to row at all. Uh- yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was another issue. <laughs> right. So so now now that you have have that, and isn't it great when you have someone that the dream is never too big? Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. And, and who listens to all my crazy ideas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and he, he, my husband's a very big supporter, and I will, I will come up with some wild things and say, I think we should do this. And he'll be like, Okay, so how will, how will we do this? Okay, we'll figure out the how, you know. And so I said, I wanted to restart the CNA training school. You know, people have been asking me, please open up a school again. We need you to open up school. And I thought, I don't know if I really want to do all that. And then it dawned on me, I said, you know, I need to open up the school for my own business for a reason. And it gives me a chance to get back into the nursing home and and give back also to the community, give people a chance to get started in the healthcare field, like I did, started out as a CNA and a lab tech. And I thought this would be a great, great way to do that. And then I can, in the process of relaunching, I said, I can teach others to do that, do the same. So other nurses that want to start a CNA training school, I can teach you how to do it. Mm-hmm. So I thought this is a, this is a great opportunity for me, but I learned from the last experience. I'm not, do, I don't have to do everything. Yeah. And this is important yeah. for your listeners when they start their business and they start to get some success. Yeah. Don't try to do everything on your own. Go ahead and yeah. outsource some things. I hired an assistant. I have an assistant. Um, I'm looking for a VA at the moment. I hired um, an instructor and she's calling me, DMing me all the time. Hey, when are you going to get started? When are you going to get started? I got these ideas. I love it. Train me. Train me. She's saying, I will. Yeah. Um, so I'm not teaching all the classes. I don't need to teach all the classes. I hire mm-hmm. you and expect you to do what you're trained to do, right? Um, and so it's letting go of that piece of control sometimes and then listening to your team. You know, mm. I have great team members that will say, hey, why don't we have this event? Why don't we put this on? Why don't we invite this person? And why don't I introduce you to this person? Because you never know uh, who has those connections. And it's been very instrumental for me is to uh, listen to the people that are on your team. And yeah. um, invite people to be a part of your team. Don't just try to do it all on your own. You can be the Lone Ranger, but you're going to be a tired Lone Ranger. In yes, the end. Man, you're going to get burnt yeah. out. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Now, is this yeah. school virtual, physical, or, or do you have a combination of both? Or how, how does the school work? Well, I decided to make mine hybrid. The state said that, be, you know, after COVID, they're like, you know what? We should let you do some virtual stuff. I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <laughs> So I made mine hybrid because I wanted to make it a little bit more accessible for people that are already working. So you can take some of your your class time will be on the computer on your own time and then other times you'll be in person. And so you get this perfect balance of being in person and also virtual. So that really helps your work life balance. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. So tell us, I want want you to plug in just a little bit for all those listeners that are out Mm -hmm. there. Um, how they could participate in the trainings that you have or any of the offerings that you have that they may be um, be able to take advantage of? Okay. Well, the easiest way is to contact me on the Nurse Shark Academy, uh, dot biz. Uh, that is uh, uh, my nursing platform where I teach other nurses how to launch their own businesses and help them along their career. My philosophy is, you know, you can leave your job, just don't leave your profession right? Mm. Figure out how to do it in a different way. Take all those nursing skills that you've learned and figure out how to do it in a different way. So you can always uh, hear me, uh, get like in that. touch with me on the nursesharkacademy.biz. Or if there, there's someone out there and you really want to be a CNA and you're local in my area, you could always go to our Baxter Professional Services HealthEducation.com page for that. But mm. yeah, and then uh, follow me on social media. And uh, I'm on several. I'm still on Twitter. I'm on Threads. Hello, uh, <laughs> Facebook, <laughs> LinkedIn, 
Instagram, you know, alignable. You can find me there on social media and other places. Yeah. And then listen to the Nurse Shark Academy show. No uh, Shark Academy it. show. Oh, man. Yes, ma'am. So one thing I want you to do before we leave, um, and I want you to take a moment to go back, um, back to that moment uh, where that lady kind of spoke into your life and said, hey, you're going to be a nurse, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know now, and you had 60 seconds to pull Tina aside and say, what would you say? I would say, be open to new possibilities. Mm -hmm. You never know where this journey is going to take you. Um, as a nurse, I've had the opportunity to work in labs. I've worked uh, in hospice. I've worked in long-term care. I worked at Q Cure Hospital. I worked long-term hospital. I worked uh, in home care. Worked in psychiatry, geriatrics, primary care. I've done a lot of different things. A legal nurse consultant, nurse business owner, nurse coach, nurse writer, nurse podcaster. Mm -hmm. I can do all these different things with my nursing career. Your nursing license is your business. Mm -hmm. And that's important. And so that that's what I would tell myself. I would say, hey, you never know where this journey is going to take you. Be open to new possibilities. Wow. Man. Love it. Love it. Be open. And, and travelers, I'm hoping that you're hearing this, man. This has been definitely encouraging for ourselves. A lot of things that you, you've been saying, you know, building a team around you. You don't have to be the lone, lone ranger. Uh, yes. Understanding what partnerships work and what don't work. Um, and just really... Um, like you said, you don't have to leave your, what, how did you phrase it? You say you don't have leave to leave your, your profe profession, profession, just figure out a different way of doing it. That's that paraphrasing mm -hmm. how you said mm -hmm. it. Um, man, those are all, all beautiful. And so travelers, I hope that you're, you're, you heard this. I hope that this moment uh, with Tina um, really brought new ideas or inspired you or just really giving you that edge of, hmm, Maybe I'm I'm doing the right thing, or you know, maybe I need to make that shift, right? So, thank you so much, Tina, for sharing your story with us. Thank you for coming on this show and just gracing us on this show. Um, we please remember to go check her out on her podcast. Uh, also, uh, if you want to um, become a CNA, right? All those things that you offer, go to her website, check her out. Um, man, we bring well, people that we bring on this show are you know close people to us. Uh, legit people, people that we know that are going to make a huge difference in your life, right? And we're so glad that Tina is now part of that fi family. So all of our listeners and travelers, uh, we come to the end of another show. And we, like we say every single week, we'll see you next week at the same time, the same place on a success journey show. Everyone have a good one. Peace. All right, one love.